This year's Tour de France is shaping up to be one of the most exciting Grand Tours of recent years. We're certainly excited, I'm sure that you are as well. Now we're going to be over there ourselves bringing you all the best content from behind the scenes and around the race itself. But first, here is our preview of the biggest cycle race of the year. Yeah, this year's route totals 3,360 kilometres. There's nine flat stages, seven mountainous stages with five mountain top finishes three hilly stages and a team time trial. But perhaps the biggest feature of this year's route is the lack of individual time trialing kilometres. In fact, there are less than 14 of them and they all come on the very first day of racing in Utrecht in the Netherlands. Too long to be classified as a prologue, the first stage will of course see the first wearer of the yellow jersey of this year's Tour de France and also create an early hierarchy amongst the GC contenders. Yeah, the time trial also marks the start of the first week, which looks like it could not only be very interesting, but also potentially very dangerous as well. Day two is completely pan flat, but if you throw into the mix very straight and open Dutch exposed roads, plus the high chance of strong winds, plus a big peloton full of nervous and fresh riders, I think we could be set for carnage. In fact, I think you could say there must be a number of riders within the peloton that were quite pleased to hear about the Dutch police strike, which is planned for that day. Yeah, stages three and four though look equally difficult with the stage finish on top of the Murder Hui and then also the following day on the cobbles of northern France. Yeah, and if last year's anything to go by, Vincenzo Nibli will be doing a rain dance ahead of the stage four pave. Now, if you cast your mind back to last year, Simon here predicted that Nibs wouldn't even make the podium. Vincenzo Nibli is not going to make the podium. So his nib took things into his own hands and set about the race like a rabid dog, even before we'd reached the mountains. And I would imagine he'd be trying to do something quite similar this year. Mm. You know, oh, sorry, you know, Stana have been in touch. If they've asked me to uh, try and enrage Vincenzo as much as possible uh, prior to the talk, just to try and get that with fighting spirit. So about I, don't, last year, I don't think he actually watched your prediction no, last did. year. No, he did. He did. Really? Yeah. No, uh, Vinikorov texted me and said he did watch it. Oh, right. Yeah. But you know everybody, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Anyway, things do calm down ever so slightly after the stage four cobbles, but then on stage nine, we've got a very punchy 28 kilometer team time trial. Then the first of the real mountains come on stage 10, a day after the first rest day. At that point, they'll be basically down in the Pyrenees, where they cross the lights of the Col d'Aspan, the Col de Tourmalet, and the Plateau de Bay. Yeah, after that, a couple of typically tough transitional stages will take the riders back over to the Alps for the final week, where they'll hit a raft of climbs, including the Col de Glandon, the Col de Quadrefer, and then also the incredible looking Lasse de Mont Vernier. Yeah, and then the penultimate day is a real beauty as well. They finish up Alp d'Huez. Now, they have had to make a slight change to that stage. It was supposed to go up the Galibier, but they've had a huge landslide recently, which means that they can't pass the road. So, before they get to Alp d'Huez, they'll now be going at the Col de la Quadrefer but in the opposite direction to stage 19. So that's the route. What about the contenders? Well, since the riders announced their race programmes last year, we've been talking about the big four. Former winners Froome, Contador, Nibali, plus Giro winner from last year and former Tour de France runner-up Nairo Quintana. Now, I think we're still expecting one of those guys to win, but they all have very different build-ups. Yeah, they certainly have. Of course, Chris Froome won the Criterium de Dauphiné, just as he did back in 2013, where of course he went on to win the Tour de France that year. But this year, it's not exactly been plain sailing for Froome. Although his form is clearly good, it's not quite at the same level as it was that we saw in 2013. But again, when you do look back to this year's Dauphiné, those two stage wins at the back end of the race, he did look pretty sharp. And, and Dan, you're pretty best placed out of all of us to yeah. tell us about his form. No, yeah, I went over to see Froome very recently. And I mean, if I had to take a guess, I'd say that he's probably on the form of his life right now. I mean, I couldn't shake him. Not at all, not even at the Madon. So I had the gradients to do it, but he was still just glued to my wheel. And it was a bit of a headwind, but... Uh, Incredible. So that, is, that does bode well for him, doesn't it? Yeah, Come no, on. I think Froomey's really going well. Anyway, last year's winner, Vincenzo Nibali, has only won one race so far this year, and that was very recently at the Italian National Championships. But that's exactly the same as he did last year. He didn't have a win before then either. So maybe he's judged his form absolutely perfectly. Yeah, Alberto Conte, of course, rode and won the Giro d'Italia. On course, he hopes for a historic double, and then he had a rest, came back and won the route to Surd and did look very, very good there. But I think the question for Alberto is, can he sustain this level of form? Mm. Absolutely. And Nairo Quintana, he won uh, Terreno Adriatico back in March in fine style, didn't he? And since then, he's spent the majority of his time back home in Colombia training at high altitude, but it's worked for him in uh, every Grand Tour he's done, isn't it? It certainly has. Yeah, I think it is worth 
Talking about a few of the riders outside of that big four though, and first on my list in terms of them would be TJ Van Garden, the American from Team BMC. He pushed Chris Froome really close recently at the Criterium de Dauphiné. He's certainly full of confidence. He really thinks that he can finish on the podium this year. Mm. What about the French guys? Let's face it, they've got some really exciting GC hopes now. We've got Thibaut Pinot uh, and also Roman Bardet of Agile Do they, we need to mention... They both had great races on the run-up as well in Switzerland and Dauphiné respectively. Pinot Pino was flying on the climbs, but I think he's going to be a little bit nervous on the pavé. But again, time will tell. And I don't think we can do the previous show without mentioning the two Yates brothers, Orica Greenedge. Possibly an outside bet, maybe nudging the top ten. Yeah, yes, I mean, let's face it, because there's only 14 individual time trial that in this year's route, it is going to be more swayed in favour of guys like Pino, who can't time trial off Toffee, or, you know, um, Roman Bardet, those guys. So Definitely. if there ever there's going to be a year for a French winner, maybe this is... And they've all had significant wins this year too, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be spectacular. Mm. Should we mention Thibaut Pino's shorts? Uh, the white ones? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, pff, I haven't seen these. It's oh. almost as bad as... Yeah, Wind River Savannah. Should we, testing, should, let's, should we leave it there? Let's just yeah, cut, let's just yeah, cut it. It doesn't need to be mentioned. Like, we can, we, we, but we don't want to be painting this either. No, don't paint it. <laughs> right, it's time to talk about the sprinters. And I think really the biggest news when it comes to them is the fact that Marcel Kittel will not be at this year's race. He's been a prolific winner of stage over the last two years, taking eight in total, but he's really been struggling for form right since the start of the year. And ultimately his team giant Alperson have decided that he's not really up to the job to go to this year's race. Yeah, so instead, John Alperson will be looking to John Degenkolb to try and deliver them some wins and focusing on the, the opening tougher sprint stages in the first week. Now, as befits the biggest race of the year, there'll be a wealth of sprinting talent on offer, on show, including Mark Cavendish of Etix Quickstep and Andre Greipel of Lotto Soudal, both with 13 and 9 wins respectively already this season. Yeah, let's not forget either uh, man of the season, Alexander mm. Christoph of Katusha, or in fact, three-time green jersey winner Peter Sagan. Uh, there's also Sam Bennett, the young mm. Irishman from uh, yeah, Argonne uh, 18. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, there's also some really strong French sprinters as well. So we've got uh, Arnaud Demar, Brian Cockard, and then also uh, Nasser Buhani, who had a really nasty crash, didn't he, on the finish line of his national championships just the other day. Uh, but he's looking like, despite some nasty injuries, he will be on the start line of fighting for stage wins. It's time for the GCN predictions. Ooh. Now, the GCN Tour preview show wouldn't be a tour preview show without us nailing our colours to the mast and essentially making a fool of ourselves a little bit further down the line. But I'm going to go first. Oh. My prediction to win the Tour de France 2015, um, Alberto Contador. Just because I kind of feel it in my bones, really. Is that something that happens when you get older? It is a little bit. I am 45 it's after It's raining. All. But to, as a little caveat to that, I think he's going to be pushed very, very close. Mm. Is that a caveat or is that a get out clause? It's both. Yeah, okay. I don't, maybe I've got the description of uh, and the definition of caveat wrong. But anyway, he's going to be pushed close. It's going to go down to the wire. Uh, yeah. Well, I am going for Chris Froome. Why? Uh, I just think he's back to his best form. I mean, when he's on his best form, no one can match him on the climbs. Although I think he and his supporters will be very nervous about the first week of racing. Mm. You? Without a shadow of a doubt, Vincenzo Nibali. Why? That guy is just class personified. No, seriously, last year, obviously, <clears throat> I said that he wasn't going to make the podium, uh, and he went on to uh, dominate the Tour de France in a way that we haven't seen for a long time. And I think this year, although he's been you know, quieter, if everyone gets through the first week, I still think he's such a great racer. I don't think he's been quieter. I think his trajectory has been pretty much the same as last year, capping it off with a double win in the Ital with the Italian title. I think it's a good call. It mm. is, but it's always a risky call, isn't it? When someone doesn't win loads and loads of bike races beforehand, you can never say without doubt they're going to win because you haven't actually seen it. But yeah, I like Vincenzo a lot. He's playing mm. poker. He's well, we've got poker. some more predictions for you. Firstly, from our US correspondent, Neil, and also apparently from a uh, celebrity. Is it the first? Oh, yeah, Jonathan Vortis. Oh, so not a celebrity then, just a team manager. Oh, yeah. yeah. JV. My prediction for the Tour de France, well, I think it's going to be an incredibly tight race. It's really hard to predict, and that's what's going to make it so exciting. You've got really four contenders for the overall win, three who have won it before. I think Nairo Quintana is probably the guy to watch. I think Movistar is going to have a strong team time trial, uh, five summit finishes. I think he's going to be able to ride defensively after the team time trial. Could go any way. I'm excited to watch, but my, my pick is Quintana. I'm going with Nairo Quintana for the win. I think... Nibali and Froome will round out the podium. 
And I also think that uh, Andrew Talansky and TJ Van Garderen are going to be hunt for, in the hunt for the top five. So those are our predictions for the race, but you can let us know yours in the usual way. Just let us know in the comment section just below this video. So if you fancy a little bit more Tour de France content, click up here for our Tour de France playlist. Yeah, or click down here for the Chris Froome interview in full, where Dan does his best to drop the former Tour de France winner. So I think we have, I don't, I don't, that first interview is just the sit down one, I think, so. I don't know much. Oh, so no one's going to have seen you dropping Chris Froome yet on the Madon? <sighs> no, I think he made us cut that bit, it's in his contract. Really? Yeah, he wouldn't allow me to drop him, to be shown anyway. That is fortunate that, that is in his contract, <laughs> isn't it? You're <laughs> really lucky, you are looking pretty lean. Oh, we can, we're continuing, all right, so if we are continuing with this, uh, with this edit, then well, I'd, really better, good, I'd better say it's absolutely free to subscribe to GCN, <laughs> and if you can do that, you can click on any one of us. Are we using this, seriously? All it's right, pretty appealing, it. yeah. No, we could, this, we is, this is why we've got so many, uh, you know, subscribers, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. of stuff, um, goals think, like this. Yeah, click on, I think, yeah, click on our jerseys, really. They're quite tightly fitting. Yeah. I quite, I quite like, I'm actually, it's growing on me, the white on yellow. Again, not something that I'd have perhaps initially thought about, but mm. I think it kind of works. Very summery, very floral. What Just do you think? Summary colour. If you like the white on yellow, give us a like. And if you don't, Mate, give us a like anyway. Somebody's going to be liking on this video. All oh, right, now. well, give us one anyway. <laughs> if you, and if you don't like white on yellow, give us a like. Lads, we're going to run into the welter if we carry on like this year. <laughs>